Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. If this is your first time visiting my channel, please go ahead, click on subscribe, and also click on that bell to receive all the updates and activities on my channel. So today we have a product review or a tool review of the Earthquake XT 12 volt lithium ion sander slash polish. Pick this up at Harbor Freight. So with this type of tool, um, it has two purposes, right? It's a sander and a polisher. I'm primarily gonna be using it for polishing needs. Uh, so in the, when you go to look at a polisher or a DA rotary or something like that, you can get them in six and nine inch sizes. And that's great if you're working on a car or a truck or a large vehicle with reasonable flat open areas. But for the particular project that I'm working at, working on that really wouldn't work for me. So before I show you the project I'm working on, uh, why don't we just go ahead and review the tool itself. So when you buy the kit, you're going to get the tool. It's going to come with a single battery, right? It's just, just like a typical Bosch or, or a uh, Makita or a Milwaukee 12 volt battery, right? Nothing, nothing too crazy about that. You're also going to get a couple of uh, backing plates for a roll lock type of accessories. Um, you'll also get a backing plate for uh, the polishing uh, part of it. And then you're going to get a three inch wool pad. You're going to get a three inch uh, cutting pad and then you also get a three inch finishing pad okay and then also you get the charger and the, uh, the case um, so I've been using this thing for about the better part of a, of a day and I'm happy to say I'm very happy with it uh, as far as runtime uh, with this I'm getting probably about half an hour with uh, intermittent use and again for what I'm what I'm using it for it's more than adequate uh, if you're going to be doing a larger product or a project uh, you may want to uh, pick up the battery. I think they're like, they're like about 20 bucks. But the tool is pretty nice, nice and lightweight. Um, it's got a trigger lock on it. It's got a spindle lock. It's got a couple holes for the, uh, there's a handle that you can put into it. Depending on if you're right or left-handed, that actually works out pretty well because when you're using it against your uh, the work, it allows you to hold it flat. All right. So enough about the tool, why don't we uh, walk over to the, uh, the project that I'm working on, I'll show you what we're dealing with, and uh, I'll show you it in action. as far as what I'm working on um, this is a 1996 Polaris Ultra 680 uh, I picked it up like three or four weeks ago or maybe two months ago I'm not sure at this point and uh, it's currently in the, in the process of getting restored um, so this this hood was actually in pretty good shape um, my intent was not to paint it but kind of see how much I could bring it back uh, as far as uh, using wet sanding methods and everything else 
But needless to say, the hood isn't perfect, but you know what? It is pretty good. Um, what I'll do is I'll kind of insert a, uh, a picture of the hood uh, prior to this with the, the decals on it, just to give you a rough idea of what I was looking, what I was starting with. But uh, as far as what this paint is, it's the, the name of the paint is called Black Sapphire Metallic. Um, it's made by PPG. And depending on what type of light is hitting it, it can go from either um, a very dark blue or black, right? So right now we're in the garage, we have fluorescent lights, which, uh, uh, which is good when you're working on something like this because it shows every defect in it, which is good or bad. So what we'll do is I'll just bring in close and uh, show you there's a lot of metal flake in the paint right so in the Sun this thing really really pops right so like I said in the caption before um, any heavy scratches I went in after it with a uh, 1500 and 2000 but you have stuff like this which I went after and it just won't it's just it's already gone through the clear so I'm unable to say that but that's fine because uh, once I put the uh, the graphics back on it, that mark is going to be covered up. You're not going to see it. But you know, in conclusion, um, that little buffer does a great job because, like I said, with tra traditional machines, like with you know six and nine inch pads, when you try to do something like this, it's going to be impossible because of the shapes and everything. There's nothing that you can do to get in there just because the machine's too big, but with stuff like this, you know, if you're working on a sled or a bike, doing tanks or fenders, it's ideal because you know it's just small, so small, and you can get in to all the little detail marks and, and not have any issues. So again, here's a little more close up of the paint. All right. So in closing, I'm gonna give it a big thumbs up. If there's any questions, comments, concerns. Go ahead and leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.